Good afternoon. Today is the 23rd of June. This is the second video about the Bromley pageant of motoring. We're at Norman Park in Bromley in South East London. And uh, this place is enormous. There's two to 3,000 cars here. I'm just walking down the sort of 80s Volkswagen stands. Already uh, taken a photograph of a very nice 19... 90 Volkswagen Golf Mark II GTI for Mr. Ben Quirk from Planet Auto, the 16 valve. This is a Mark I GTI. I mean, there's just loads and loads of cars like this. It's a Corrado. I could just keep sort of, uh, you know, walking along all day filming Volkswagen, but just loads here. It's another big bumper GTI 16 valve. Another G Mark II 16 valve. Audi S8, Mark II Scirocco, There's all kinds of other old Volkswagens, other things back there too. Just to give you an idea of the scale of this thing, I mean, I can't possibly film everything here, It'd just to be absolutely impossible. Lovely Carmen gear. There's already been a video that I've done on um, the Hubnut stand, which should be shown separately. Wow, this Golf Mark II looks very unusual. Yes, it's for Rally Golf. I've never seen even one of these before in my life. Wow, this is certainly going to be a fun afternoon. I do apologize in advance for all the wind noise and the incorrect information and possibly the shaky camera. That's just the way that these things tend to go. Lovely um, five series here for Matt from the Matt's Beamer YouTube channel. I don't know exactly what model this is, they've taken the badge off, but this is a very late E28 five series. And it is predictably very beautiful, five speed manual gearbox, light beige interior, correct wheels. Wonderful example of the kind of thing you see at Bromley Pageant. Here's the Toyota section, rather lovely Toyota Carina E. Looks like quite an early one. Uh, very late Celica. Ooh, Toyota Crown Coupe, about 1972. I love the style of these. It's one of these in an episode of Persuaders, which is a, a saloon. But uh, yes, they were sold in this country in the early 70s. And then we've got an NSX, especially for Mr. Ben Quirk from Planet Auto, who had one of these cars on loan from the Honda Heritage Fleet recently. This is an earlier NSX. You can see these, these are the wheels that probably would have come on a car like this. This is an automatic like his. What a great car, right next to a very, very beautiful first generation Civic. Five speed manual gearbox, absolutely tiny as well. Beautiful, beautiful condition. Lovely. Got a whole range of Nissans here, right the way through from this um, 2002 on Mira, through this Nissan Laurel be about 85 or thereabouts. A uh, very late Bluebird here. Sunderland built one. That looks uh, suspiciously like a Toyota Supra. Another Toyota Carina E, a much later one than the last one. This and Sunny Coupe. The Lexus SC430. Beautiful Datsun 200L. Looks like a, a sort of very early, early 70s car. So many of these uh, Japanese cars from this era look like American cars. Another Toyota Crown. This is the saloon version. Very typical colour. Daihatsu Materia as well, right next to it. This show is wonderful. Um, Saab 9000, very 
right one. And wow, the final generation Saab 95. I've very, very rarely seen these before. This is like going bird spotting. Look at this car, isn't it absolutely, utterly beautiful? Very, very rare. And of course, right next to that, we've got this lovely Saab 900 Turbo. This is a saloon, actually, rather than the hatchback. Again, in beautiful condition. Lovely. Somebody once asked me whether or not you could have too many 1970s Triumphs in your life, and I think the answer is probably not. Lovely, very late um, Vitesse there. A couple of Stags. Very much like Stags. Got an early one there. And an Acclaim. Wow, this is in nice condition. These are still not very expensive. You want an Acclaim. If I'm trying to buy one, probably now. Most of these are long rusted away. Uh, this probably is HLS, yes it's one down from the top of the range and these plates on it look like they're actually actually original. There's a, a Z-Bot rust proofing sticker on it which probably is the reason why this car has lasted so long. I actually really like these, I wouldn't mind the claim CD, which is the one that has the electric windows. Lots more Triumph. The Tess and Stag action, pretty much any colour that you would care to mention is here. And we've got this Herald, yes this one, another Herald and a TR7. Absolutely wonderful, Spitfire. Is that a TR5? Probably. That's interesting. It's a Triumph Herald, but it's on an R plate. Hmm. It's funny going on there. And of course, classic Spitfire in British racing. Green. I really haven't a clue quite what's going on here. This is an MG3. It's similar to the one that my lady wife and I have. Um, this is a form sport, judging by the wheels, but it's actually, I think, probably a three star because it's got parking sensors on the back. I don't know why someone's taken the star wheels off and put the form sport ones on, but there we go. Um, this is a 2016 car. You can tell that because it's got a little strip of chrome underneath the badge there. I do apologise in advance for the wind noise, that's just the way that it goes and there's not a lot I can do about it. Um, especially when I'm walking around looking at Alfa Romeo GTVs, a particular one, built about 1978. And here's an Alfa Romeo Montreal, which looks just as weird in the metal as it does probably on camera. Behind that we've got a Triumph TR7 convertible. An extremely late um, Alpha Spider 87, they stopped production I think in 92 of these. Lancia Fulvia. Yes, very similar to the one that was used in Department S. This is a 66, the one in Department S I think was a 68. Beautiful, beautiful little car. More of the MG section here, including what looks like um, an MG ZS 180. Really, really, really late one. It's a 55 plate. Maybe it's not in the 180 because it can't really, can't really tell from the outside. Maybe it's just a lesser engine one. But nevertheless, I've just found a, a Mark One Vauxhall Cavalier Coupe from about 1979. Those are rare. I've got a uh, Holden Monaro, Vauxhall Monaro. Um, and then a Victor 101. Also known as VFC Victor. It's a 66 model. And right next to it, a Carlton GSI 3000. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
for one down from the Lotus Carlton, which is a modified version of this three litre six cylinder engine. Lovely. <coughs> We're not a million miles away from uh, Dagenham here. And it's really not surprising that you'd see an enormous, enormous amount of Fords here, including this Mark III Cortina 2000 GT two door. I don't think I've ever seen a Mark III two-door before, apart from what, professionals, of course. Mark IV Escort. Cortina 80, it's been modified. Wow, Mark II Ford Escort gear. Mm, mm, mm. Look at those headlamps. And look at that colour. That looks absolutely bent. Very, very, very early Ford console. This is not a Granada. This is a console. It's a 2.5 litre V6. It's an L model. It's very similar to the car that's used in Reagan, which is the Sweeney Pilot, although that's actually a Granada. This is a console. Same wheels. Very, very early Zephyr Zodiac. This will be early 50s. Bit of gold badging on there. Oh, wow. Cortina 80. Mark IV Escort XR 3i. Beautiful, beautiful car. This, if I'm not mistaken, looks like a Mark II Fiesta gear. My grandfather had one of th one of these. No, it's one point one five fly. Okay, this looks a bit like a gear. Love to review a gear at some point on my channel. Sort of XR two look about it as well. And of course, then we get into more Mark two Granadas. Do like Mark two Granadas? As uh, I know. Many of you on the channel do from watching my review of uh, Mr. James Coleman's 1982 Ford Granada 2.8 gear X estate. Here is a Mark III Zodiac. Mark II Cortina. That's uh, Mark IV Escort Cabriolet, although I don't know what's going on with the front end. Three Capri 2.8 injection. I don't know if this is the special, it could be. Very, very nice indeed. Mark III Granada facelift estate. Rover 800 Sterling, a very late one. A couple of more Mark III Capris. Ooh. Three, two litre cabaret two. That'll be a special edition, I imagine. 1982. Another Capri 2.8 injection. What looks like a Lotus Cortina. Mark one. Very late one. Very late um, Ford Anglia Super. Stop production of those in 67. Oh, cat size spec. Ford Escort Mark III, 1.6 gear. Look at that dashboard and my reflection. Oh, it's for sale as well. Very nice. Only 34,000 miles from you. If you want to be just like Jill Gascoigne, you can buy this car and drive around. Very nice. This is this lovely Rover 3500 from about 1973. Especially I'm going to take some video for Mr. Matt Richardson from Furious Driving, who sadly couldn't bring his P6 to the Hubnut stand at Bromley Pageant today. And next to it we've got an interesting looking V8. That's a, that's a Mark 1 P6 front end, isn't it? I don't know what's going on here. Oh well, looks nice anyway. 
beautiful. Lovely late Mark 1 Rover 800 here. Being a saloon, has that very pure original look to it, next to lovely P5. It's not a P5B because it's three litre. This, however, is a P5B. It's got the 3.5 former Buick engine in it. I don't think this is a coupe because it's got the sort of standard looking roof. Be about 1969 or thereabouts. Lovely V6 engined Rover 75 from around 2004. some TVRs. I'm not very good on TVRs so I won't even talk about those because I'll get it all wrong. Um, well I won't get it wrong is the fact that this is a Rover Tourer because this is um, a 96 and 97 it wasn't even called the 400 Tourer they just called it the Tourer. This one I'm not sure of the engine size in this it has this, the original dashboard in it though. Yeah, I'm not sure what specification that is. Looks very suspiciously like a factory plate, but I think those original dealer plates on it, so it's not a factory car. And a very nice P4 as well. And here's that Sterling, which we glimpsed out in the background earlier. A very late Sterling. Showing off that later front end. Another P5. Probably a P5B, I imagine, by that stage. Yep, 3.5 litre P5B. Ooh, this looks like a Rover 75B8. Wow, those, these are rare. This is 2004. Only available after 2004 facelift. Rear wheel drive, 4.6 litre Ford Modular V out of a Mustang. Amazing. Some Lotuses here, including an Asprey Turbo. Um, sort of fuel rise only spec. This one um, looks like it's got a factory plate on it, OPW. Yeah, it's a front wheel driver lat and, and the uh, 70s Europa and another Europa. Similar colour to the one they used in the Avengers actually, although that Europa was a much earlier one than this. This is about 1970. The Europa in um, the Avengers was 68. I've had to skip out a lot of the show, otherwise this video would just be too long. But we're at the Austin and Austin Healy section here. Beautiful Austin A30, I think, because of the smaller rear window. 1966. Austin Cambridge, Austin A60 Cambridge. Estate, I think it was called the Countryman. I might be wrong about that. A couple of frog eye sprites. <coughs> Austin Westminster, I think this is VA110 Westminster at this stage on a B plate. Similar to the one that was used and blown up in the new Avengers episode last of the Cybernauts. This one is another Westminster with overdrive. Austin, Austin Healy Sprite last year they made them in 1970 and then the A35 which has the large um, back window full race spec as well and oh a Vandam Plath four Princess 4 litre R. We might have to do this manually, we might have to get our two boys in the arena. One of those I think was in, was in the Avengers as well. This is a 64 okay. car, but one of the Avengers was a 66. Singer Vogue from 59 or so. <laughs> Lovely Riley RM. Another Riley RM. A really, really interesting continuation, Reliant Scimitar GTE from 1990, made by, made by the continuation company called Middlebridge, but from a design 
starting from about 1968 or so. Very interesting to see one of these. I've never seen one of these before. I've only ever seen the Reliant ones. I think it's just bad as the bad as the Middle Bridge, actually. Oh, ho ho, Morris Marina door handles. We're gonna have a look at a, real, a couple of real Marines in a second. And right next to it, we've got, uh, there's the Middle Bridge logo. We've got a, a actual Reliant similar to this one. Again, this is a, a later car because um, they only made them at Reliant Motors, I think, until this. about 76. This, is going on my Twitter this one, later. though, is a 79 series, so that's sorry, SE6A. He's done this before. You can oh, yeah. look at the types of tracks. He can't even talk. Very nice. Another Sibber to here. With the hard top. Be about an 85 or thereabouts. Switches very familiar to people I think who drive metros, if I remember correctly. I might be wrong. Lovely Morris Minor Traveller. Morris 1300 GT. Mm. Lovely colour as well. That one looks absolutely immaculate. It's the sort of thing that does tickle my fancy. As the, does this extremely late Morris Marina. It's not in the towel because the front end and the door handles and the boot are different. Here's another late marina. This is a 1300 HL. Again, about 1979, 1980. It's an Austin Morris type steering wheel in there as well. A couple of extra driving lights in that. Well, they're both marina 1300 HLs. Fascinating. I will have to draw this slightly shambolic shuffle around the Bromley patent of motoring to a close soon because I'm getting low on battery and getting low on memory but where else are you going to see three early Hillman Avengers in a row next of course to an Aldax shaped Minx well there was you and your Hillman Avenger and me in my high class saloon I've had to cut short my tribute to Tim Hardis steel I span there to show you this 1963 standard Vanguard. This is the last year of production for the Vanguard. After that it was replaced by the Triumph 2000. You've got overdrive on it. Next to it we've got this Humber Hawk. I don't know what mark this is. Um, I'm not going to speculate on that because I'm not an expert on roots cars. And a Gilban Genie. Mm, mm, mm. A beautiful sort of early 70s colour fibreglass car made in South Wales killed off when the entire company was killed off in the early 70s due to the introduction of VAT on kit cars one thing you can never have too much of in a video is an R8 Rover and we've got not one but two R8 Rover Tomcats here, Rover 200 Coupes, there's another one over there on the Hobnut stand which we filmed on another video. This one's got a lovely leather interior and then we've got this rather nice Rover 400 Tora. Might even be a Rover fleet plate but if it's a Birmingham registration. I do very much like this 1995 Rover 420 GSI Tora. Mm. <laughs> right colour as well. And of course we've got Rover 216 SLI. I had a Rover 216 SLI too. Mine was an automatic, just like this one. But mine was a post facelift car, a very late one. This is um, a much earlier car. There's the lovely Honda D Series engine in there. Nice, correct early Rover R8 hubcaps as well. And this is a Rover 216 GTI, I believe. It's a, oh, it's a GSI. I do apologize, it's a GSI. I saw the automatic transmission leave and I thought it can't possibly be a GTI with a automatic transmission it turns out I am correct 
there's a bit of information on there as well. Love, love this car. It's not Nightfire Red, it's a green colour, but these early R8s have this lovely two-tone effect on the paintwork. Absolutely beautiful. I've just been offered um, by a gentleman who goes by the name of Laser Capri on YouTube. In 1986, Ford Capri Mark III two-liter laser to review for True Jacket Reviews, which will be coming out at some point. But as we're filming the Cars of the Professionals episode, um, where I talk about cars and professionals, next weekend, um, it's time to look at some Ford Capri Mark III's that are here. And my gosh, there are some really tasty ones, including, oh, I've seen this one before. This is a 1979 Ford Capri 2.0 litre S that I saw at the Retro Rides Weekender in Goodwood. I believe this is owned by a gentleman called Darren. I very, very much like it. Those wheels are not original. They look very nice though. <laughs> Lovely interior. And we've got this uh, other Mark III Capri as well here. Those wheels, wow, interesting. About 1980 or thereabouts. This looks very much like probably a GL. Four speed gearbox, vinyl roof. Yes, Capri 1.6 GL. I really am going to have to draw this video to a close very soon. But I can't possibly go about showing you this beautiful early 90s Audi 80. This is the post facelift one. It'd be about 94 or thereabouts if it's got an M plate. I have a perennial 1.9 TDI engine, of course, that's why it's still running. 1999 Alfa Romeo GTV 2 litre twin spark. I've been offered one of these for review actually, so you'll be seeing this on the channel later this year. Very attractive cars. Mark III Golf GTI. I don't think this is a 16 valve unless I'm wrong. Note standard GTI 115 horsepower 2 litre. And then this is what I've come to see the creme de creme of my excitement. A 1983 Austin Maestro 1.3L. And they've even left a window for me to film the original Maestro dashboard. So, so rare, only 44,000 miles from new. Only a four speed gearbox, A plus series engine. First year of production for the Maestro. Just amazing. And actually, from Henley's garage in Yule, <laughs> where I actually lived for 11 years. Well, I didn't live in Yule at the time, of course. Not even got a passenger side mirror. What a car. Amazing. On my way to do the last bit of the video, I've just spotted this 1990 Vauxhall Cavalier Mark III SRI. A lot of my viewers I know love Mark III Cavaliers, and so do I. So uh, this one looks particularly nice. Mm. Original dealer plates, turbo techniques. I've also spotted this Mark II Vauxhall Astra GTE. If this is the original colour, I'd be surprised, but it might well be, I suppose. The wheels look brilliant. I love the look of this car. I think this is the one with a digital dash. Superb, superb little car. Another Mark II Astra GTE here. I don't think we can even see the dash. No, we can't. It's on top of the digital dash. I can't even see it. Lovely, about 88 or thereabouts. And some more Triumph Stags. We really cannot have enough of Triumph Stags in one video. This one, however, is in sort of professional spec. There was a car in professionals in one of the first series episodes, just like this one, in this color. I didn't have a hard top on it. Very nice. I'm going to finish this video on the Mark 
to Cortina 1600E Owners Club stand. I have never seen so many Ford Cortina Mark II 1600Es all together as here. Don't they look amazing? This one is my favourite though because this is exactly the same apart from the door mirrors as a car that's featured in a series four episode of a professionals called Kickback where it's driven by um, what's his name Norman oh dear I forget the name of the actor but anyway well, if I remember Norman's surname I will get back to you Norman Ashley that's it Norman Ashley drove one of these so I hope you found that video to be informative and interesting Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to watch the, the Shambolic Shuffle round the Hubnut stand as well, that I filmed earlier. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below. Once again, I apologise for the incorrect information and the wind noise, which is the way these things go. My website is www.lloydvehicleconsulting.co.uk. Wish me to source a car for you. It could be a lovely classic like this. 1400 e or it could be a you know up-to-date car then please get in touch on my website there's a contact tab on the front page there I also have a Facebook page too which is facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting thank you ever so much indeed for watching